Hi, welcome to Educator.com. We're going to be doing a short lesson uh, introducing you to Excel. If you've already worked with Excel before, please feel free to move on. All right, before we get to visualizing distributions in Excel, we just want to give you a little overview. Excel is a really nice handy spreadsheet program. It's pretty easy to use. Most computers have it. Um, it's also really useful because a lot of com uh, companies and laboratories use Excel. So it's a nice real life skill to have. Another thing about Excel is that it's sort of a good short intro to programming. It can handle iterative computations, computations that you have to do over and over again, and um, small calculations in bulk. So here's how Excel is organized. It's based on workbooks. Think of a file as a workbook. It's a series of what we call sheets. So each file, when you save an Excel file, is really a collection called a workbook. So just to show you on a real Excel workbook, notice how it says workbook up there, when you save this file, and I hit save here, this whole file is going to save several sheets, and the sheets are listed down here. Right now we only have one sheet, but here I'm going to add on another sheet. Ta-da! So we have sheet one, sheet two. Now you could have four or five, all kinds of different sheets, you could also rename these sheets to whatever you want. So we could call this one data. And there you go, that's our sheets. I know it's a little bit small here. Let me try to zoom out for you. Oh, it still, it still ends up being really small. But hopefully you could see that in the corner of your screen. So in each worksheet, you're going to see columns and rows. Columns are going to be shown to you and indexed by a letter. So columns are always letters, like A, B, C, D. The rows, on the other hand, are always going to be indexed by numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So each cell, or square, has a name that you can index by saying the column name and the row name. Something like A1, B5, these are all cell names. Now each cell can accept a number, a text, or a formula and we'll get into what those are. So just to show you again, in Excel, here are my columns indexed by letters like A, B, C, D. And here are my rows indexed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way down the line. And each cell has A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So when I click on this cell, this cell is B2. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the tools. The toolbar um, in Excel usually has a menu bar, which is sort of your standard Microsoft uh, suite toolbar. Um, it, also have, it also usually has a toolbar for things like um, formatting your words and letters, fonts, colors, um, whether you want things to be centered or not. Those things are pretty basic. And it usually has a formula bar. Now this is, uh, new to Excel and different from all the other Microsoft Suite uh, programs. And in order to let Excel know that you want to type in a formula, you start the formula with an equal sign. So just to show you that on Excel, so here I could write down, you know, A, B, O, B, C, right? Or I could write down a number. Here we have uh, your standard toolbar for things like hey, I want to save it or I want to print it. Um, but then you would probably also have something like a formatting palette to help you figure out, oh, well, what kind of font do I want it in? Do I want my 10 to be in red? Right? Um, do I want my 10 sort of spaced uh, in the middle or aligned to the left? Right? Uh, you could also make this 10 face in a different direction, so we could turn it orthogonally. Uh, let me turn it back so that we're used to it again. Um, now, if I wanted to write a formula, I would just start by writing an equal sign. Now, a formula can take lots of things, and we're going to get into what some of those things mean. Um, but one of the things I can do in a formula is I can reference another cell. So let's say I want this cell to have whatever is in this cell, B2. 
So if I click on B2, then this formula says this cell is going to be equal to whatever is in B2. If I click enter, it should have the same thing that was in B2. Now I could change B2, like I could make that 100, and that's going to change this one immediately because it's just a formula. It's just pointing to this cell and saying, hey, whatever's in it, take that on as well. Now some of you may have a separate formula bar, or you might, by double clicking in it, be able to see what, what's sort of written in here. So we'll, uh, we'll probably show it to you uh, with the formula just typed inside the cell, but once again, if you want to use the formula bar, that's not a problem. All right, let me move this out of the way. All right, so that's basically it for Excel organization. Now we're going to go on to how to reconcile Excel with the data organization that we learned about in statistics so far. All right, Excel plus data. Now in, in Excel, we know that a file is called a worksheet. In data language or statistics language, that's where we're gonna put our data. Each row in Excel is referenced by numbers. Each row in data is going to represent a case, whatever object uh, we're interested in studying or analyzing. In Excel, the columns are going to be referenced by letters, and these columns are going to represent variables in our data. Now, each cell, referenced by a number and a letter, stuck together, like A1, that's going to take on a value. One of our values goes into our variables. So that's how Excel and data come together. Hopefully, uh, you've learned a little something from this short uh, intervention, but don't worry. If Excel is still a little bit new to you, you'll get real used to it by the end of this lesson. Thanks for using educator.com.